The moment of silence you just heard was the Pope telling us how much Bible he knew. Proverbs chapter 5. And Solomon's writing this. And I've got to wonder, did he write this before his thousand wives? Or did he write it after his thousand wives? My son, again, that's Solomon writing to Rehoboam, and could be God writing to us. Attend, take part, attendance, be there unto my wisdom, and bow thy ear to my understanding. Bear, listen up, pay attention, that's what he's saying. That thou mayest regard discretion, the, the ability right from wrong. You know, when somebody comes up to you, you know, thou shalt not judge, you ain't got no discretion. I mean, when that light is turning yellow, discretion, do I make it? Go ahead and just stop. That thy lips may keep knowledge. That's a great atmosphere for a father to his child. There's wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discretion. That is truly lacking in the world today. Then he goes four. But what I just said in verses one and two. Now you would think what we just read in verse one and two would. All right, this is what. But for the lips of a strange woman. This is a man that had a thousand wives and porcupines. Who has who left the God of his fathers and serve other gods? And it, this is written after those marriages. That we need to listen up, because Psalm is now going to tell us a lesson he learned. But it doesn't tell you when. I mean, this says B.C. a thousand. I mean, I don't think Psalm sat down and wrote all these in one shot. The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Sweet, natural sweetener. It is natural for the strange woman to her lips to be sweet. Sweet is not always good. Now a strange woman to Israel would be a Gentile woman and Solomon had Gentile wives. Very first one he brought in, the Bible speaks about, it was Pharaoh's daughter. And her mouth is smoother than oil. I bet you didn't know that's where that expression came from. Smoother than oil. Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. Let's see, I got a note here. 727. Let's see what it says there. 727. I don't know what that has to do with. We'll get Let's talk about a woman. Okay. So she is a sweet talker and too much sugar can kill you. Ask any diabetic. But her end is bitter as wormwood. You find that in Revelation 8.10. And it's exactly what wormwood is. It's bitter. It causes death. The end is bitter for this woman. That's not good. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Well, the Bible describes the word of God as a sharp as a two-edged sword. Jesus Christ is coming with a two-edged sword. Her her end is bitter wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. We're not going back to the lips of her. We're going to her end. It's sharp. It's going to cut you. Her feet go down to death. That's not good. And her steps take hold on hell. The Jews were forbidden to marry outside of their tribe, never mind Gentiles. 
It was forbidden in the law. And there's some people, oh, there, you know, there's no race discrimination. They are all bad. For the, for the nation of Israel, there is a race discrimination. Gad was the Mary the, uh, of Gad and Judah, the Mary of Judah, and Levi, the Mary of Levi, and Simeon, the Mary of Simeon, all 12 tribes. It was forbidden by the law to go outside, not only outside the tribe again, but outside to the Gentiles. And I got to wonder, did Solomon write this before or after he got married? If he wrote it before, he didn't take his own advice. If he wrote it afterwards or during his marriages, he got to a point like, I've done something wrong. Almost wish they, if they knew the dates for each chapter. But that's not good. Death and hell. Have you ever looked at the references to the Bible of death and hell? Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. That which followed the, one of the horses in the, uh, Revelation chapter 6 is death and hell. This is an antichrist. She's got a two-edged sword and she comes with death and hell. Least thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Look at chapter 426. That ponder the path of thy feet. That's the only two places in the Bible ponder shows up. And they're both a path. One is you better watch to where your feet are. We, we discussed last night. This one. You get involved with this woman. You're going to be oh, What is my life? Where am I going with this? Now the book of Nehemiah. When they went into captivity. They were out in the land. They were living outside the laws and they came to the conclusion that they were they were given the permission to divorce the heathen women that's not here her ways we oh we looked at a lot of different ways between last night and now we saw the way of the wicked and the way of the evil man now we see the way of a strange woman what would be a strange woman to the, to a Christian in the church age? She's not saved. She's not known by God. Her name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. I would date her until she utterly rejected Jesus Christ and I would have nothing to do with her. I say I would date her because my first wife, Lisa, when we began dating, she was not saved. And when I came to the point... I wanted to marry her. I brought her to the pastor. I didn't want to do it because I didn't want her to receive Christ because she loved me. She turned and, and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved about a week after. I popped the question. I never popped the question. If, and I would have left her if she would have rejected Jesus. That would be a strange woman to a Christian. Her ways are movable. And you would think, hey, you know what that means? Well, I can date her, but I can... No, her way. She has a different talk. She has a different move. She has a different way. She's never the same person all the time. She will speak to how you want to be, to who you are, and then speak differently to someone else to what they are, and then speak differently to somebody else who they are. She's a politician. And that's all I'm going to say about that today. But that's what she is. She's a people pleaser. That thou can not know them. You can't understand her. And you get involved with her, you're going to be, well, wait a minute, that's not how she's at home. And that's the Christians that show up in church and they're all nice and all that. And the kids are looking like, that's not how dad is at home. They ain't my parents out there when we're out of the church house. The parents become strange. Uh, why are they acting like holy baloney? That's what this woman is. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children. All right, he's going from my son now, any child. And we've seen that before. 
There are times that Solomon will take his message to his son and he will pen. This is to all children. And what's God saying? If he's speaking to his children and he goes all children, this rule that's put forth is just as if you're saved and you don't know my son. You better be careful who you marry. I know someone who married a man and, oh, I thought he was a Christian. He acted like a Christian. He went to church like a Christian. Well, what was he after he got married? You didn't study him enough. And the person agreed. Depart not from the words of my mouth. And that's what he said in verses 1 and 2. You listen to me. Right in the middle of this statement about the strength. you got to listen to me. you got to hear me. And it's a problem because you know what he's saying? is When you're in love with somebody, you're not going to listen. And you're probably going to get offensive when they start speaking ill of the person that you love. I would imagine somebody, I don't know how many times, somebody would come up to the Solomon at times and say, that woman, Solomon, the law, God, you can't tell me that Solomon and all those women and all those gods, somebody did not pray. Listen, even David was warned by Nathan. Solomon was given a stern warning. Again, i got to wonder, is this before his life, during his life, or later on late in his life with his wife? Remove thy way far from her. Don't even get involved, Samson. Look at the troubles he got with Gentile women. One woman ended up getting getting hooked up with his best friend and dying being burnt. One woman was just a one night affair. The other woman deceived him, took the virtue and power of his Nazarite hood. So, uh, Samson should have learned. Samuel, I mean Solomon should have learned. And come not nigh the door of her house. Don't go home with her. Don't even go where she lives. Least, if you do, least thou give thy honor unto others. And thy years unto the cruel, your character will be ruined. You'll be disrespected. What honor you had and what character you had, this woman will bring it down. And you'll be lower than the people who you would say, yes, sir, no, sir. You'll be lower than their category. They would not look up to you. I mean, for the nation of Israel, by the time Jesus came, the Sumerians, mixed marriage people, they were, you know, get away. Even that woman said at the well, she says, what are you doing a Jew talking to me? Yeah, there's that prejudice. And here it is, you know, what are you, what are you doing talking to me? What are you doing with me? And I years unto the cruel. It's just a ruined life. When you get together with the wrong person, he's saying woman, but I say man or female. You better pray to God if you want if you want a wife and pray to God he sends. And be careful because the devil hears your prayers too. Least strangers be filled with thy wealth. That's, that's that's the prodigal son. Now, it wasn't a woman, but his father gave him all his wealth. And what, he, what happened to his wealth? His buddy, whoo! The prodigal son's got money. Hey, hey, buy us a drink. Buy us this. Buy us that. Strangers, that's other Gentiles. 
You got to pay for her family. You got to pay for her friends. They're all Gentiles. You're going to be doing business with the Gentiles because most of the time, too, because the Jews may, you know, avoid you. And the Jews did that. The Jews had a prejudice to the Gentiles. I mean, Gentiles were called dogs. I mean, you know what that you know what God, what Jesus said God said to that woman that her daughter had the devil and she was she was a Greek or I think it was. He said, you know, I, 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 I we don't feed the dogs. Do you know what that word word would be today if we used it? He called that woman a dog, and she acknowledged it. And thy labors, what you do, be in the house of the stranger. You get involved with that strange woman, I'm, I'm going to take it as the Gentile. You're going to remove your Jewish heritage, and you're going to become a filthy dog as a Samaritan. And that's exactly what happened to Solomon. He, he married these Gentiles, and he left the Hebrew God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and went and served their gods, and pay tribute to their gods and their family and their people. And thou mourn at the last. I mean, the, the endings of your life. Mourning. That's what it means. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Now that could be death. You mourn and then you die and your body is decayed or a disease, a venereal disease. And then you say, and I say, have how have I hated instruction what he's given us right now? And if this was written late in his life, after all these lies, he didn't listen to his own advice. If he wrote this earlier than his marriages, and later on married, he, he didn't listen to his advice. And many of the kings throughout the, uh, of Rehoboam and on did not follow the advice of Proverbs. Because they would marry women and women outside Judah. Never mind other tribes, but the, the, the heathen. And my heart despised reproof. Reproof, somebody's been trying to correct. Now, whether Solomon is saying it in general, somebody's going to come along and say, what you're doing is wrong. Or maybe even Solomon. Maybe Solomon's talking to his son. You know what, son? I had people come and warn me. I didn't listen. I try to warn a guy today, you know, I, I, Quote in the Bible, told him what the Bible said, and you okay. It didn't involve a woman, but you know, learn on your own. You're wrong. That's a hard lesson. When you're involved with a woman, you get married, and if you have children, you learn hard. It's like you can't. The Bible says you can't divorce that person. Only way Jesus said to divorce is, you know, if they go out and commit adultery against you. But even still, I mean, the Bible, if you can try to make things right, Paul says in Corinthians. Marrying the wrong person can be a, a, a and we're going we're gonna to talk about pretty soon, Lord willing, the book of Proverbs. Psalm is going to tell us about, you know, the contentious woman. The woman's always arguing. It's not a pleasant life. And have not obeyed the voice of my teacher. Jewish scribes, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the synagogues yet. Synagogues came during uh, Babylon. But when they were, when the Levites would travel around, and I suppose on the Sabbath, and when Dad would teach his family, believe it or not, the law. This would come up. 
And I would assume, hopefully, a faithful dad to the law and his family would tell his sons, you know, when you get near time, you got to find somebody of our tribe. Hopefully they would sit down and tell him what kind of wife to look for. That's what Solomon's saying. Nor incline my ear to them that instruct me. I would not listen. You know what the biggest problem we have in our life when it comes to sin? We will not listen to the preacher. We will not listen to the Bible. We will not listen to the Christian. We know what we're doing in them. Pilgrim, on his pilgrim path and pilgrim's progress. He was told by evangelists. He was told by the people. And he still, there's one time that the, the shepherds, he's with the shepherds and the shepherds tell him, hey, watch out for that guy. And he goes off, I, I forget it was faithful, or whatever. he goes off and he, he falls for the guy he was warned about. And I, I don't know if it was the angel what came and, and took pilgrim over his knee and gave him a licking. When we don't listen to our teachers and we don't listen to those that instructed us, that's when God comes and chastises us. And guess what? If you're married, that woman's still there. And you can't say, goodbye. I mean, I know America. Goodbye. Just get out of here. That's not the way of the Bible. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation assembly. Chapter 4, verse 14. Enter not in the path of the wicked and go not in the way of the evil man. Verse 19 of, of chapter 4. And the way of the wicked is as darkness and they know not what they stumble. Now, this guy did not start off in darkness. He's in light by the instructor. He's in light by the teacher. But he goes into the darkness. And once he gets involved with a strange woman, then he's going to stumble. And Solomon did. And he's in the congregation assembly of what? Well, who's the writer? The Jews. Or maybe the evil that missed the congregation assembly is the Gentiles. He said almost. Looks like it came out. Now 15 to 21, no, 15 to 19, he's going to talk about a wife. We talked about the strange woman, now let's look at the wife. Drink waters out of thy own cistern. That's a kind of water collection device, like a well, I would say. And he's saying, liken a woman, a wife, to living waters. Waters. And he's like, for a woman, find a wife and let her be your source of thirst. Thirst after your wife. That's what he's saying. And running waters out of thy own well. There's another place of the woman, the wife is likened to a vine that grows amongst the house. Water is needed for living. God. So is a wife. God. Eh, eh. And Solomon say from that strange woman, go to that wife that you have. Get a wife, not a strange woman. And partake of her life of water. In a well. Let thy fountains be dispersed aboard. Let her go out. Don't keep her locked in the house. Let her go out. Let her shop. Go out with her. Go to places with her. I don't my marriages. And rivers of water in the street. She's allowed to go to the house. She's allowed to go to the store. She's allowed. Let them be only thy own. That's your wife and no one else's wife. And not a stranger with thee. Well, that stranger would be. That's not a Gentile. That's 
another man coming into your family. That's the stranger. He don't belong in that marriage bed. He don't belong to that woman. Keep another man out. The New Testament says if a woman has a question, she's supposed to go home and ask her husband. Don't let her put her faith and reliance on the pastor. It might cause trouble. Let thy fountain be blessed, happy. And sometimes you can't always please a woman. They got this saying, you know, a happy wife is a happy life. That, that's a lie. Because some women, you, you got you to have 14 jobs to make her happy. That she may be happy, but what's she doing to you? And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Then get married young. Doesn't say how young. Let her be happy. Let her be blessed. You better help. You better make sure your wife is happy. And you're the rejoice. If your wife doesn't make you rejoice, then she has a problem. If you don't make your wife happy, then you've got a problem. Let her be as a loving hind, that's a kind of deer, and pleasant roe, that's a kind of deer. I guess you have to study those animals. I never have. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Her breast. Jesus said, if you look upon another woman to lust after in your heart, you have committed adultery. You're satisfied with the breast of your wife. That's not adultery. That's the marriage bed. At all times. And be thou ravaged always with her love. That's the marriage bed. That's a relationship. That's a healthy, marriageable relationship together. There is no man and there's no other woman. From a man who had a thousand one. Again, I wonder if he wrote this before or after or during. And why wilt thou, my son... Be ravished with a strange woman. Okay, Solomon, answer the question. Because you were. Now, is that strange woman, are we going back to the strange woman in verse 3, a Gentile? Or is that strange woman another woman besides the wife that we've just been talking about? If it's another woman besides your wife, verses 15 through 19, verse 20 is now adultery, if that's the case. And in the law, for a Jew, man, you're going to hell. I know David did it. I know David murdered, but sure mercies of David, but... And it's not that he's had it. It's a warning. Why wilt thou? And if you're married, get back to your wife and get things right with your wife. And, bosoms, and embrace the bosom of a stranger. Again, is it an extramarital affair, adultery, or is that strange woman Gentile in verse 3? It's both. For the ways of man, there's a lot of ways we've been reading about. Are before the eyes of the Lord. And we'll read, we'll read in Proverbs. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. People don't realize when it comes to a man and a woman. Wife or not wife. And whatever his eyes are doing. Jesus acknowledged that he sees us. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth, that's pondereth, that's not ponder, all his goings. world wants Santa Claus watching you, because Santa Claus is nice. You know, I was told if you're a good boy, Santa Claus will bring you gifts, and if you're a bad boy, Santa Claus won't bring you nothing. I was a bad boy, and Santa Claus still brought me things. Though there was no Santa Claus. 
our God's not Santa Claus. Though our God, he sees you when you're sleeping, he sees when you're awake, he knows when you've been good, and he knows when you've been, you know it. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. He shall be holding with the cords of sin being tied down. That's what cords of rope. His own sins are going to tie him up. It's going to bound him. And sin does. Talk to a man who, who claims alcohol. I'm an alcoholic. No, you're, you're sinning. He's tied to alcohol and he can't get out. Talk to someone who's involved in, and dependent upon drugs. They're tied to that drug. And there are people who are tied to sex. And women. Cords of sin. You marry the wrong woman. And the expression goes, they tied the knot. Interesting. He shall die without instruction. And in greatness of his folly, foolishness, he shall go astray. And I think 21, 23 are different because he says in verse 13 about the strange woman, he's been instructed. I think 21, 22, and 23, I think he's, you know, the ways of the Lord. And if you're wicked and iniquity and bound to your sin. But still, if it's a Jewish person, he's grown up with the law. Still, it's foolishness to him to be tied to his sin and to die in his iniquity. 